Pat's Two Cents, wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Now, this is what I got, and I hope it blesses some of you. You know, we all have family members that can be quite difficult. Some can be challenging. Family members, relatives, cousins, uncles, aunts, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. Some of them leave a lot to be desired, and we all get that because we're all human. And to some of them, we may leave a lot to be desired as well. So, what I want to share with you is what God gave me. And this is something that's going to be hard for some of you, because some of you feel like you got a, a, a real right to feel the way you do. But this, this season is a good time to remind ourselves of what God wants from us, okay? Now, we're reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 3. <laughs> For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that no man, here, here, here is the key, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despiseth not man, but God, who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit, but is touching brotherly love. Ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Good. Now we're going to stop right there. I do want to read verse 11, though, because this could fit into that. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business, to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Now, you know, sometimes during this time of the year, you talk about friction. <laughs> Years ago, I used to hate Thanksgiving because my mother and father would be in that kitchen just arguing and attitudes would be flaring up and it was almost as if they were saying, we're going to enjoy Thanksgiving even if it kills us, you know, and it was like, it wasn't a joyful time. It was very stressful. Attitudes just bouncing off the chandeliers, just, oh my goodness, my mother would be oversensitive and my father would be aggravated by her and if he couldn't find something, then you'd hear the cabinet doors slamming and things banging on the table. And whew, he was a good cook with that attitude. Whoa. So a lot of times what would end up happening if my brother came over or different relatives would come over, you would find that one, that somebody would get annoyed by, uh, with my mother, you know, especially one of my brothers. He was notorious for getting annoyed by my mother, and he would always let his voice tell it. Um, sometimes when we get with our family members, that can be the most challenging time to be loving, can it? Especially the ones that constantly pour salt in our open wounds that they created in the first place. Right. Now I'm going to tell you, there are two things. There are two alternatives. Maybe three, but right now I got two on my mind. Two, al <clears throat> two alternatives. One, go there determined to love and forgive and get along and keep the trap shut. Keep your attitude to yourself. Number two, and neither one is better than the other. 
depending on your circumstance and who you're dealing with. Number two, stay away. Have a nice day with someone else. Don't try to force it. There are times, I don't know if you ever heard this song. You got you to gotta have wisdom. You got to know where God's heart is in the matter. God may be working on them as well as you. And then there are times when God can do better healing by you staying away from them. So it depends on how God wants to work out the kinks by rubbing you guys up against each other or keeping you apart from hurting each other anymore. There's an old song that I used to hear. If it don't fit, don't force it, just relax and let it go. And we forget and we try to force relationships that aren't ready. Either there's too little communication going on and way too much assumption. People read things into comments. They see attitudes that aren't there and create attitudes by reacting with their own attitude to something that wasn't even done with an attitude in the first place. Family dynamics can really, really be a strain. And God, he wants, he wants us to be ministers of reconciliation. Well, there are times when healing needs to take place in order for reconciliation to occur. And we have to go to God and ask him to heal those areas. Um, there are people we get around. They like to tease like I like to tease. They don't know they're pouring salt in your open wound. They think they're just being funny. Let me share an example. My next door neighbor, her husband, his, his name is Steve. Steve was a character, but he wasn't a bad person at all. Steve had a sense of humor and he'd like to tease. And I would call up. It took me a minute, a couple of minutes to realize he was joking with me. And I would call and ask to speak to Gladys. And you know what he would say to me? Who's this? And I said, this is Pat. And he said, oh, I thought it was somebody. It took me a minute. I thought he was annoyed by me calling. He was teasing me. So when you're overly sensitive, there are people that will rub you the wrong way at first. But if you pray and ask God to help you see where they're really coming from, you might find out that you're the only one tripping. And they're seriously just innocently playing with you. No malice, no sarcasm, nothing mean. They're not trying to hurt you. They're just being playful, being humorous. So after a while, I would see him coming in the room and I said, mm, I'm smelling trouble. Steve's here. He knew I was joking with him. It didn't bother him. And he would tease me about my shoes. Girl, when you going to get some new shoes? And after a while, we just started going back and forth, messing with each other. But it was all in fun. There was no meanness whatsoever. It took me a while to get to understand him. Now, there are other people who have a way of putting you down and belittling you. And when you get in the room, they'll make little snide remarks about the f many failures that you've had or the poor choices in men or the poor choices in women that they disrespect about you or how you never pay people back. It, whatever the case is, whether they are right or whether they are wrong, there are times when people just decide out of resentment and meanness 
that when they see you coming, they're going to bring their weapons so they can stick it in you and turn the knife, give you some good jabs so they can enjoy watching you flinch. They can enjoy watching you cringe for whatever reason, for whatever they have against you. Now, there are times when you have family dynamics and you have some family members that look down on other family members. There are some family members that are very judgmental. There are some family members that are very, very critical and they will hurt your feelings. I mean, it is hands down guaranteed. It won't be 30 minutes before a jab comes. It won't be 30 minutes before you are publicly humiliated in front of the whole family. Let me tell you, baby, God did not call you to be a doormat. He called you to love and forgive. If that cannot be done peaceably because of them, because they won't leave you alone, stay away and go somewhere else. You have choices. You don't have to be with family if the family is packed with toxic relationships. Enjoy your holiday. Don't tolerate it. Don't suffer through it. Enjoy your holiday. Let me share this with you. Just to give you a quick example, uh, there were a couple of members of my husband's family that made it extremely obvious I was not their choice for him as a wife. I was either too fat or I was too whatever, but I wasn't what they thought was worthy of their brother. And there was a lot of disrespect and contempt showed as a result in some words, very mean words. They made sure Milton didn't hear him, but they made sure I did. Now, I never told my husband, one of his friends told him, and he jammed them up, and, and we never saw them again. They never came by our house again. That's how I know he jammed them up, because they were very, very close with my husband. Now, what I want to share with you is this. When the holidays came, since he knew, since his friend overheard the whole thing and knew what happened, I told Milton, I said, I forgive. But I'm not going to be a doormat. I'm not going to go where my feelings are going to be hurt, where all I want to do is hide in the bathroom and cry. Because I'm a big baby, y'all. My feelings get hurt easy. I'm a big baby. And God knows how vulnerable I am. I refuse to put up a wall. I refuse to put up a shield and hide my heart. I love loving abundantly. I love opening my heart up to people. So if I get around people that I know are going to hurt me, I won't. And I let my husband know, go and enjoy your family. Don't let me come between that. You go enjoy your family. And there are times when he's come with me to my family's celebrations. And when I started noticing this, a lot of my family members we're basically ignoring him because a lot of people get very uncomfortable around a person with a handicap, either if they're in a wheelchair, on crutches, if they have missing limbs, if they're blind, if they're deaf, they tend to be ostracized. It's not, it's not on purpose. It really is a thoughtless, um, inconsiderate thing. They don't really realize how they're leaving certain people out because they, they feel awkward, so they just don't deal. They won't interact. And I told my husband, I said, if you don't feel like going, you don't have to. And if you don't feel like going, I won't. And then, you know, we can go somewhere else. You know, we don't have to be around each other's family. We don't have to. It's not necessary. We want to have fun. We want to enjoy ourselves. We don't want to sit and tolerate and endure a feeling of awkwardness, a feeling of I don't fit, I don't belong. That's not a good feeling. And we loved each other too much to allow each other to have to go through that for the sake of putting up appearances. No, 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 neither one of us were phony about that. So what I want to share with you 
is the holidays are coming now. Now, there's some people you need to really reconcile with. You need to sit down, hash some stuff out with. So you can have a nice holiday. So you can have a nice ongoing relationship. Maybe that'll take place in a year. Maybe that'll take place in two years. But you got to go to God to know how that's to happen, how it's to go down. You don't force it. If it don't fit, don't force it. Just relax and let it go. But let it go and let it be in God's hands. Don't handle it your way. Now, when that family member was sick and was in the convalescent home, Milton and I both went to visit his family member. And I, I fed her. I was fine with that. She was too sick to be mean to me, so I didn't have to worry about feeling uncomfortable because I had truly forgiven her. I just refused to be hurt. You hear what I'm saying? All right. So you have to know where your heart is when you're dealing with people, because God knows even if you're in denial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may call it one thing, and God may be looking at it and saying, uh-uh, baby, you haven't forgiven them. You know why I know? Because when this happens, that's your reaction. When you hear their name, that's how you feel. I know how you feel. You don't have to pray it to me. I know it before, before you know you're feeling it. I know what's in your heart. So when God tells you he knows what's in your heart, there's no need in you trying to go into denial. You got to bear your heart before the Lord and ask him to get in there and make things right. You hear me? All right. Now that's your word of exhortation for the holidays and for relationships, ongoing relationships. There are a lot of family members you're going to keep having to run into. Ex-wives, ex-husbands, having to, to share your children, all kind of odd relationships like that. But the bottom line, is you make sure that you take care of you. Not in a selfish way, in a way of protecting yourself. Amen? All right. And don't you, I gotta, I gotta flip the script. Don't you do any attacking. That doesn't give you a license to attack, humiliate, put down, criticize. No. You keep that to yourself. You got that in your heart. You're going to have to clear that with God. God's going to have to clean that out of you. Because that's what he calls guile. G-U-I-L-E. And we don't want him to say that about our hearts, do we? Mm, yeah, we want to be filled with his love. Amen. God bless you. And happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.